Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out this new micro drone. It's called the Akatainau from Amax Innovations. That's the frame. I actually built this myself from a bunch of parts. And I'll go over all that in a second here. Uh, this does not come as a plug and play or ready to fly model. You do have to build it yourself, so keep that in mind. But the build is actually pretty basic, not that difficult. And the reason I chose the components, this has to do with the size of this frame. Uh, and the size of the stack here. The Basically this cage here is just the right size to support these three boards, which is, this is the HDLRC F28 uh, with the TX20 video transmitters, a 20 and 200 milliwatt power switchable video transmitter here. And I did a video on this power cube here uh, about a week or two ago. If you want more information on and details on this power cube, I'll put a card in the corner click on that video and check that out. But uh, using something like this makes the build pretty simple. Um, basically all I did was I mounted the cube into the frame. And by the way this frame only takes uh, the holes here M2 so it's perfect for the stack. Uh, the, uh, the, the screws are M2 so if you have M2.5 or M3 uh, you'll have to drill out those holes in the bottom to mount your power cube. So I mounted the, basically I mounted the 4-in-1 EC first, then I mounted the motors, and then I soldered my motor wires to the EC. So the EC pads are going on the inside like this on both sides. So I just have my motor wires running up inside here, and then they soldered on over here for the side. And do the same thing on the back one over here. Wrapped around the standoff to go to the back side. That seemed to be the easiest. And then the ones in the front, because this cube is kind of... Uh, move back a little bit, I just soldered them directly to the front right there. So that was pretty simple. And then the uh, F4 flight controller just uh, plugs into the 4-1-EC uh, via a set of pins. And then I just uh, connected up my video transmitter. And then this part was pretty much done. I had to solder on some wires for the camera. This is the Runcam Microswift. I soldered that onto the uh, flight control board. And then also a pigtail for my receiver. And I have a, I'm using a FlySky receiver here. I have uh, the whip antenna for the video transmitter zip tied to this back standoff so that this little micro FL connector doesn't get tugged on. And then I'm using the zip tie to hold the, actually hold the receiver in place here on the outside. So I'm kind of doing this, going to start doing this with my little micro receivers that have like the uh, short antennas like this. If you zip tie, if you heat shrink them, to a zip tie on the back here, it will actually keep the antenna straight and will also hold the receiver on too because it's a pretty small receiver and pretty light. So it should hold on there just fine. Um, let's see, on this side here I've got my XT30 connector soldered on this way and it's going backwards and zip tie to this back standoff. Uh, some statistics on the frame itself, it's 130 millimeters motor to motor and it's a true X frame, 92 millimeters front, uh, side to side and front to back, so it's a true X. The uh, bottom plate is three millimeters thick, very, very strong, and I believe they've cut the carbon fiber correctly here. You can see it's straight along the arms, so it's very, very stiff. The two side plates here that uh, form the roll bar cage are two millimeters thick, and then you get these four uh, M, I think these are M2.5, standoffs. There's one, two, three, and four. That holds the cage together onto the bottom plate. And then you have this kind of strange contraption here. These like little hooks here that basically mount the Runcam Microswift. Uh, and you have some spacers here that actually push the holders out from the side because the reason that it's so narrow is so that you can get uh, prop clearance for three inch props here. You can see that these are these are some DYS 30 45 props and they clear the frame no problem because it's so narrow up top here. And you can see that also in the front. It's also pretty narrow like that and three inch props clear no problem. And that's because of this design where they've uh, basically squeezed in these two uh, side plates and then had this kind of interesting system to, to mount the camera. So uh, not sure how strong that's going to be or how well that's going to hold up over time. I guess we'll see if I uh, have a bunch of crashes. 
Something you should note is that I had to use the Runcam Microsoft with the 2.3 millimeter lens. It's a, it's a narrower lens and it's a longer focal length than the one with the 2.1 millimeter lens. And that's because the width here doesn't allow this to go in here. So you see that the camera will not fit in between the two side plates. On top of that, the lens was further back. So even if I could push this back, the two side plates here would be in the field of view of the camera. So I decided to go with the 2.3 mm lens. If you have the micro arrow, I believe that's a narrower lens as well. That should fit in here, no problem. The motors I'm using are the Spintec motors. These are the 1106 8000 kV. So pretty good motors here. They're basically sunny sky motors. So if you're looking for the equivalent motor, I think they make uh, uh, 8000 and 9000 kV in the 1106. And then I'm going to be just doing running this on 2S. Just going to be using these uh, Beta FPV 600 million power 2S lipos with the XT30. I don't think you should be running this on 3S. It's probably going to be drawing. Uh, it's probably too much power for the motors. I did try uh, hovering it indoors on 3S and the motors got pretty hot so just be aware of that it might be possible if I could go to a two-bladed prop perhaps I'm not sure but probably not recommended um, 2S should be no problem the, the motors were just a little bit warm and uh, they flew just fine so I did flash uh, Betaflight uh, 321 on the flight controller and also updated the uh, 4 one AC to 16 at 67 uh, there's a little bit two cards in the corner for those videos on how to do the config and uh, flashing of the two boards here. And then once you do the flashing, then you can just take my settings, which I'll put in the description. It'll be a CLI dump and they'll have my PIDs and all my settings, rates and everything. So you can uh, copy them if you want to uh, duplicate the way this thing flies and you see in the video a little bit later in the flight demo. A couple other things that I forgot to mention, the bare weight of this frame, if you just get the frame by itself, is about 23 grams. And then the overall weight here, as built with the props on, completely built here, uh, came out to 91 grams. So pretty light overall for three inch props on this powerful setup. It should have no problem uh, giving you a really good flight performance. With that being said, I'll go ahead and I'll roll some flight footage for you. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Pretty quiet, although it is, you know, it's just 2S. It's very smooth so far. Let's try a little punch out here. Very floaty. Come on back. That's very nice. I like it the way it's flying so far. No tuning issues. Sounds motors sound good, props sound good. Not much flutter. Very predictable. hear that and get a little close here and hear that it sounds really smooth. Okay, it's FPV this thing. Let's see if the motors are warm. Yeah, the motors aren't even warm at all. They're totally cool. <laughs> 